2014 marks 100 years since the start of the First World War, also known as the Great War. Now we know all about the tactics of trench warfare and the great battles fought along the Western Front, but we don't often stop and consider what it was like for the women left at home while their husbands and sons were off fighting overseas. These women manned key war industries such as munitions factories and the intelligence service. I'm here at the Imperial War Museum North where a new exhibit is dedicated to women and industry during the war to find out more. They probably don't recognise this place, but it's in your living rooms all the time. From Countdown to Coronation Street via Jeremy Kyle, BBC Breakfast, Dragon's Den and Blue Peter, Media City is home to a phenomenal amount of British media industry's output. Based here on the Salford Quays, Media City is home to the BBC's sports and children's department. And I'm here to take a look round. Come on. Have you ever felt really creative that you've wanted to make your own puppet? Then how about having a go at one of these? It's a very simple stick puppet and I'm going to show you how to make one. First of all, you're going to need some card, some glue, some multicoloured lolly sticks, a pen and some scissors. Now, the first thing you want to do is to draw a simple face shape onto the card. And then we take the scissors and we cut the shape out of the card. Now, we take the lolly sticks. Now, these have been painted. You can paint them any colour you want. I've chosen blue. And what we do is that we take the glue, just dab a little bit on the end of the stick and stick the face shape to the lolly stick. The next thing you're going to need is, is things to decorate your, uh, your puppet. Now maybe you want to draw these on or, or you can have a lot more fun with creative ways such as these wibbly wobbly eyes. Uh, that's what I've gone for. Dab some glue on there and stick them to the face two of them. Now there you go, that, that, that's a very basic puppet and you might want to decorate these with, with some pom-poms maybe. I've got these and uh, I think I'm going to use these for his cheeks, some nice pink cheeks with pink pom-poms on there. There we go. And some black ones for hair, maybe. And there you have it, your very own little stick puppet. And you can decorate them in any way you want and make as many different styles as you want. It's up to you how creative you are with that. Well, go out and have some fun and experiment. Good evening, I'm Jack Everett, here are the news headlines. Both the UK and Scottish governments will meet today to discuss the future of North Sea oil and gas. The issue is a key point in the Yes campaign ahead of a referendum on Scottish independence on the 18th of September. Victims of prolific paedophile Jimmy Savile felt like they were being ignored and laughed at according to a report by the NSPCC. The report commended victims of the late DJ for showing true courage. A new unmanned plane is to be trialled over Britain this week. Army chiefs say the Watchkeeper aircraft will allow them to provide real-time imagery to the ground commander so he can take appropriate action. Piers Morgan's CNN show is to come to an end next month following flagging ratings. Former editor of the Daily Mirror is said to be in talks with the broadcaster over potential future projects. 
he has hosted the primetime show since 2011. And finally, former Carry On star Kenneth Williams has been honoured with a blue plaque on what would have been his 88th birthday. Co-star Barbara Windsor unveiled the plaque outside the London flat Mr Williams lived in from 1963 to 1970. Those are the news headlines. Join me at 10 for a more in-depth look at these stories and more. I'm here at Mid Cheshire Radio to talk to one of the presenters, Michael Hocking, about what he does for charity and why he does it. So, Mike, what do you actually do at the station? Um, I do a few things at the station. I uh, host two shows um, as part of a team uh, on the Saturday morning show, The Vibe. I also host an alternative music show called The Alternative Show uh, on Tuesday nights, 8 till 10, uh, which, for which I source interviews with bands from around Manchester and Liverpool. I go to their gigs, I interview them at their gigs, having sort of contacted them beforehand, I just show up and then play that as an interview package on air. I hear you took part in a charity run recently. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, well that was, um, I run anyway, I love running. Um, it's something I always do, it's, it's it, for the fitness side of it, because I'm, I'm like a bean pole, obviously I'm very skinny, so I can, I can I, I lend myself well to running. And um, because it's for a good cause, in support of Parkinson's UK, it's all about promoting awareness of Parkinson's, because it's quite a misunderstood um, illness. Uh, I have a family member who suffers from Parkinson's, so there's obviously a sentimental um, side to it there. But uh, yeah, it was, it was good, it was difficult, it was, it was a lot harder than I thought, because I've run anyway and I've run 10Ks before, but then uh, running, doing a 10K race is kind of, you, you have to learn to pace yourself, and I maybe didn't do that as well as I could have, but it was definitely worth it. I raised about, I think it was about £200, I think, for Parkinson. Was it a good, was it a good time, you running? Yeah, uh, it was, I don't know, what was the time now? I think it was like 47 minutes or something. I wanted to get under 45, but I didn't manage it that time. And one final question, are you proud of what you've done? And have you got any more plans to do anything else to fundraise for charity? Yeah, no, I'm doing two more 10Ks, actually. 10K, for me, that seems like quite a distance, and for normal people, that is a distance. But for, like, proper runners, if any proper runners see this, that's about 10K, please. I want to do the Great North Run but um, for Parkinson's UK, but that's, that's a tall order. So we'll, we'll see. Michael, thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks. So there you have it. Britain's economy may not be in such a great shape right now, but the theatre industry is positively booming. It seems that audiences have turned to comfort from live forms of theatre, and the Lowry is well placed to serve those needs. That's about it from me. Join me next week when I will be talking about another key industry in Britain's cultural heritage, the railways. Goodbye.